People who work in high-class restaurants and hotels, what is the most ridiculous, stereotypical, rich person thing you've ever experienced someone has done? I know it may be technically off-topic, but I worked IT, computer tech in a small tourist ski town, and had a few run-ins with properly rich people. The worst was a local lawyer, called for support because his email wasn't working. I showed up, no one at my office would take the call, but I was young and eager for work and asked, what's the problem? He told me he didn't have the time to explain the problem, that his time was too valuable and I should just figure it out because that's what he paid me for. Let me assure you, as someone that bills by the hour, I definitely made that one work. The others are actually way more positive, though also super wealthy. First, old lady calls up and the computer has a virus. I show up at her condo. To be clear, condo is four stories directly on the ski slope with a private elevator and dedicated movie theater. Computer itself is just junk though, standard Dell Crapola from 2004 or whatever. I start the virus scan. It'll take like an hour or more. Half an hour in, this little dog is yipping at me, friendly like, and the old lady picks her up then asks how much longer. I tell her, I can't really say. Scan has another 30 minutes, but if a virus shows up, I could take a lot longer to clean up. Old lady Miss Calendar, she says, Oh, no rush. We just wanted to know if we should tell our pilot to warm up the plane yet or not. Yeah, a $1,000 PC and my $95 per hour virus scan are literally holding up a private freaking plane, and she's okay with that. For the record, the dog's name is Marie. And I took about 45 more minutes and removed a minor virus, then reset her browser settings to disable about 35 toolbars and fix the issue. Second, guy calls because his internet is crapped out. I show up, typical wireless internet, directional terrestrial for the area. Midwinter, go climb up on the roof and hammer a bunch of icicles away from the dishes antenna. Come back down, reset everything. No prob, kids all back online. He asked if I could help with his satellite TV. I said I'd try. Basically the same problem. A bit of ice and the dish needs fine-tuning in direction. Fix it. He's happy. Leaving, he tries to give me cash. I say we bill through the company, but if he has a business card or something, that's easiest. He says, yeah, but don't bill the company. I'll write my personal on the back. Get card. Thumb covers part of it. Card says PepsiCo. Red president near my thumb. Except to move thumb, see, of Western marketing or something. Nope, says, and CEO. Super secret, the business card had a coupon on the back. Good for one Frito-Lay or Pepsi soda product or 75 cents off anything else from PepsiCo. Third, guy calls our local repair shop, only one for 100 plus miles, asking if we install routers. Sure, yeah. Do you sell computers? Yeah, those two. Well, I'd like to buy, he counts on fingers or something, like five PCs, one for each room and three or four laptops to throw around the place. This is like a $30,000 sale in a shop that typically does $1,000 a week in sales tops. Checks with the boss, he says get credit first, guy insists he can pay cash, but I should bring it all to his new house next week. Credit goes through, show up at a mountain mansion, 6,000 square feet, entire flatbed trucks of empty wine crates, straw spilling out of their wooden slats. Go to unload, an old chubby guy walks up in sandals and cargo shorts. Hey, are you the computer guy? Yeah, that's me. Look at the guy, assume he's property, manager, butler, cousin, something. I'm looking for Mr. XXXXX. Oh, yeah, that's me. Here, let me give you a hand with those boxes. He helps unload, shows me the place, and thanks me profusely for showing up on such short notice, etc. Turns out he was retiring from a CFO gig at a major company in Chicago. In the process of installing things, I saw the full house. Wine cellar alone was huge. 18-foot ceilings with a rolling library-style ladder on a half-moon shelf of wine. Connected directly to that was a walk-in humidor. Outside of that, a massive media-slash-theater room. The whole house was connected to a smart home system that juggled the DVD jukebox, this was before streaming, to every TV in the house, complete with 12-inch touchscreen tablet remotes that, when carried, would cause the show to follow you from room to room, opening and closing hidden screens, curtains, and activating dimming lights. 
insane, and yet the guy was super friendly. I love the positive stories in this one, and damn, that house in number three sounds like a dream. Story two. I'm none of the above, but a soldier. We held an annual ball at a local marina hotel restaurant and bar and had it reserved for the evening. The barkeep and the host grabs our commander a few hours into the event and says, there's a guy, he's been a daily regular for the past 15 years, who wants to grab his usual nightcap, do you mind? The commander agrees and the gentleman comes in, sits at his spot and proceeds to enjoy the show while occasionally covering costs for those of us grabbing drinks in exchange for a little small talk about what we do. After about three hours, he grabs his coat and heads out. He then returns about an hour later and proceeds to shut down the joint with us, still covering drinks here and there. The next day, when I came in as part of the cleanup crew, grabbing drunkenly abandoned uniforms or materials, the host gave me the breakdown after I asked how long their charges normally take to process as I hadn't seen my bar tab hit my account yet. Turns out the regular owned a chunk of the marina and covered a combined $12,000 bar tab as, quote, Thanks to the servicemen and women, I had a tab of over $450 waiting on my card completely covered that night. It was glorious. I hope somewhere up there in the North County, this old rich dude is still getting his daily nightcap and making people's lives greater. He was engaging to talk to, pleasurable company, and didn't leave things hanging when no one was ready to move on. Story 3. I used to work at a ski resort that sits at the top of a steep canyon. The geography is pretty extreme and people don't want to drive through the snow, so everyone with enough money stays directly at the resort. Our rooms generally weren't over-the-top luxurious, but we had probably the second or third nicest hotel in the resort area and saw some rich clientele. One time, someone in sales or reservations screwed up with a conference which caused the significantly larger and more five-star luxury-style place up the hill to become oversold. So naturally, they bumped some of them down to our hotel. Normally, this isn't a big deal. We'd comp them enough stuff like free spa passes at the five-star place and a meal, and they'd be happy. They're coming in for some random conference that sold a huge block of rooms. They probably didn't even know what hotel they were at or what type of room they were in. As someone who works at a higher-end hotel, you get really, really sensitive to people's body languages, and you can tell when people are grumpy. Normally, they're just tired from a long trip or pissed at their spouse or something and it has nothing to do with you, but you can see it a hundred yards away. This guy walked through the door and was broadcasting his crappy attitude like there was a giant lighthouse light strapped on his head. Not only was he pissed off, but he kept making eye contact with me to let me know he was pissed off about the move and pissed off that he had to wait in line to check in. I knew when he walked up that he was going to go off, He gave me the typically crappy attitude interrogation. What's going on? Why did this happen? Are you incompetent? Yada, yada, yada. It was really unpleasant, but I'm a pro. I was doing pretty good at the hospitality verbal kung fu and not giving him anything to be pissed off at me about. He started asking about the amenities of the hotel, looking for an opening. Do you have a pool? Yes, sir, we do. Here's your key. You have a restaurant. Yes, sir, it's really fantastic. Here's a voucher for a meal on us. Would you like me to make you a reservation? Do you have a spa? Yes, we have steam rooms, a sauna, and a masseuse on contract. We also would be happy to take you to the five-star spa at any time. Here's the number for our valet driver. What time would you prefer your appointment? It's also worth noting that we're like 100 yards away from the other building. We even had a 24-hour valet to come pick them up and drive them around literally on call if they didn't want to walk through the snow. We have a better restaurant than the five-star place at normal prices, a nice gym, nice pool, the whole nine yards. This was a wipe-your-bum-if-you-ask nice kind of hospitality environment that most people really enjoyed. He couldn't really find anything to complain about, but he was still interrogating me. Then he asked me about the ski lockers. Do you have ski lockers? Yes, sir, the ski locker is on the first floor just across the walkway from the tram center so you can unload without having to walk up any stairs. The locker number is just your room number. Here's your combination. Do you have boot warmers? No, sir, we do not. He'd finally found something to go off about. The dude threw his head back and let out a big, Oh, you don't have boot warmers? 
What kind of place doesn't have boot warmers in the locker room? You expect me to put on my skis when they're frozen cold in the morning. What am I supposed to do? Put them in my room where they'll get all smelly? Dude proceeded to unleash on me for a good three or four minutes all the pent-up rage he'd been building for the last hour or so. Except his target was how ridiculous it was that we didn't have electric boot warmers in his private ski locker at the luxury hotel. I worked in high-end hospitality for 10 years, and probably the second worst chewing I ever received from a customer was over our lack of frickin' boot warmers. If you're wondering what my first worst chewing was, it's not that great of a story. This lady had a weird thing about being in a room with an adjoining door and let us know well ahead of time to make sure she got a room that didn't have one. Someone moved people around without checking the notes and she ended up in a weird room with an adjoining door. We had literally burned all the vacant rooms fixing other issues with guests. In instances like that where we made a mistake and people get really irate, we can book them at other hotels and generally fall over backwards, but the roads were closed because of winter conditions and all our rooms were occupied, so there was literally nothing I could do. She kind of just awkwardly berated me for a long time, even after she realized that I had no control over the situation. I kind of snapped at her after a while and called her out for being crappy to me, and then it got super awkward, and she just sort of left. She was there for like a week, and we avoided each other the whole time. The boot warmer guy was way more ridiculous and hilarious, but he was only there for a few minutes. This lady was standing in the hotel lobby telling me this is unacceptable on repeat for like two hours. It was awful. I really hope he realized at some point how ridiculous he must have looked and sounded fishing so hard for something to be mad about. And since we're already halfway through the video, please do hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. It really helps us out. Big thank you. Let's go ahead and get back to the stories. Story 4. I have a positive one to throw in amidst all the negative. I'm loosely acquainted with someone who is obscenely rich. He dated my best friend for a while back when we were in college, and as you can imagine, he bought her fancy things all the time, took her on expensive family vacations with his folks, etc., etc. He was a stereotypical rich kid, but he was also kind and still very down-to-earth. They dated about a year, and in the spring, we went spring breaking in his family's condo at a famous spring break beach location, and there was just me, my best friend, him, and a couple of his friends. The group decided we wanted good old-fashioned Waffle House breakfast after a night of revelry. After eating, I noticed he was lingering behind the group. He'd said he had to take a leak, but he stopped back by the table on his way out to the car. Curious, I ran back to the restrooms just so I could pass by the table to see what he'd done. He left the waitress a small pile of Benjamins as a tip. Had to be about four or five hundred dollars. I couldn't quite tell because they were folded and rumpled from being in his wallet. My mouth fell open when I saw it and I forgot I was even heading to the restroom. I looked out by the car and he was watching me through the glass windows, held up his finger to his lips mouthing, shh, and beckoned me back out to the car. I didn't tell, but my eyes were glued to the table as we pulled away in his car. The waitress collapsed into the seat of the table when she saw it, pretty sure she was crying. Letting that guy get away was the dumbest thing my best friend ever did in her life. Story 5. I operated a premium chain restaurant in Canada. One day, this Indian gentleman started coming in, at first by himself. On the first day, he spent $200 on wine and tipped $1,000. The next day, he did the same again. When we saw him the third time, I had servers fighting over him. Anyway, one evening he got buzzed on wine and Brad, the busboy, made the mistake complimenting his watch. Mr. S takes off his tag and gives it to Brad. The next morning, Mr. S comes back to get his card, asks if Brad is there. I say yes and go get him. Brad knows what's up and is removing the watch as he walks over to Mr. S. Mr. S says, Brad, I'm really sorry I got buzzed last night and I gave you my watch. Brad is chuckling as he is removing the watch and says it's no problem and he was just holding the watch until Mr. S returned. The next thing Mr. S said, I could not believe. Uh, Brad, no, you don't understand. I'm sorry because it was very rude of me to give you a used gift. And at that moment, Mr. S pulled out a box with a brand new tag cure inside and handed it over to Brad. Another one, I got interviewed at a large hotel attached to a casino and while I was being shown around the front desk, A woman walked up, said nothing, and got room keys after being greeted by the front desk agent. 
She immediately turned and walked away. Then the manager who was interviewing turned to me and said, that's Miss Rich Lady Pants. You never ask her for her name, her ID, or God forbid a credit card. She stays here comped once or twice a week because her husband spends so much in the casino. If you upset her, she will yell at you and then hand the person working next to you a $100 bill just to spite you. I ended up turning down a job there, thankfully, so because apparently she wasn't the only guest of her type there. Well, I would have taken the job, then teamed up with my co-workers to get money off of her by upsetting her, then we just split the money. Story 6. My uncle works at a very upscale restaurant in a very well-to-do and desirable vacation island in the Atlantic Ocean. One of the regular customers is a billionaire oil guy, my uncle has told me. He arrives on a yacht that tows a smaller yacht. The smaller yacht is still big enough to have a helicopter. He demands to have his dog seated at the table and feeds them faux gras and expensive water. When he takes humans to eat, my uncle has never seen him with the same woman twice and often it's a table of women. If he really likes the meal, he will go through the restaurant and, in front of everyone, peel off crisps 100s from a giant roll of money in his pocket and tip every service person whether they helped or not. One time, the owner got a call from health inspectors saying they received a complaint that dogs were seen eating in the restaurant. All the owner did was speak the billionaire's name, and the health inspector said, Oh, okay, bye. Story 7. Don't work at uh, any high-class restaurants or hotels, but I currently live in an old yet nice and comfy apartment in Giza, around 20 minutes from the pyramids complex. The landlady is a very nice old lady, probably in her 60s, and is filthy, filthy, filthy rich. Last year, my car had to be repaired after a minor crash for more than a week, and when the landlady found out from the Bawab's doorman about my situation, she sent one of her English-speaking maids to give me car keys for a BMW 520i, Mercedes-Benz S600, and a brand new Land Cruiser. The madam insists you use her car until yours is repaired. I was shocked, of course, and asked her if she still could go around with her lending this much cars to me. No worry, madam has 12 cars in al Karaya. Okay, I guess I ended up only using the Land Cruiser because it's the cheapest one, I think. Another story is when she knew I would graduate from college soon. She asked me to come visit her place. I did as she asked, and she just gave me a set of keys and some money. Here, I have a nice villa in Ayin Sokna. Go visit it with friends and family. Food and drinks are on me. I have maids and cooks there. Car you can use is mine. The money is for fuel. Happy graduation. I told her that I just couldn't take it, but she shooed me away and told me to return her keys only after I really visited the villa. Haven't gone to the place yet, but I will soon enough when I have time. Ridiculous, yeah, but in a really good way. Story 8 I worked at a nice restaurant in downtown Portland and one day a lady called to make a dinner reservation for a large group. But first she starts asking all these questions about security, we had none, and how I thought the staff and patrons would handle a celebrity dining there. Is there enough space to be private? They like to be private. Would it be okay if they brought their own security to stop people from taking pictures and such, etc.? But of course, she couldn't name names. I rolled my eyes, told her whatever they needed to do, and booked the date and time. Yes, I was super curious who it would be and stayed past my shift to see who walked through the doors when the big night came. The group arrived, and it was no one. Not one of us who worked there recognized a single member of their party. They sure acted like they were someone, but all we saw was a loud group of jerky-looking 20-somethings. They actually did bring a bodyguard who stood in the corner with sunglasses on the whole time. The only attention they got from other diners was the occasional side eye because they were being so rude and obnoxious a-holes. Shock of shocks, they treated our staff horribly and tipped even worse. We'll never know who that person thought they were. This happened about nine years ago, so a little before the YouTuber invasion, I think, but maybe not. Just some punks who thought they were someone. For those of you asking about the autograt, that actually jogged a whole new memory. We did try to add 18%, but the party threw a massive fit about that, complained about the service, which I'm sure was fine, it was a well-known place, and refused to pay it, so the manager took it off so as not to create a bigger scene. Left the server in tears. I think everyone just wanted to get them out by that point. Story 9 I work at a ridiculously upscale steakhouse in Manhattan while in college as a hostess. 
We have some of the most demanding and exclusive clients come in daily, and I have a lot of stories. Our guests range from Michael Cohen, Steve Madden, Anderson Cooper, to lesser-known Real Housewives stars and just filthy rich businessmen and women. Last winter, while at work, we had three hostesses at the podium, one for seating, one for checking in, one for checking coats. I was checking coats. Tips are unbelievable. Well, and it was around 7 p.m., our busiest hour, and we usually do around 300 covers per night, and we have an entire bar apart from the restaurant side, so it is always hectic. Well, a lady checks in with her husband and hands me her coat. I hand her her ticket number for her coat, then proceed to hang it up and mark it with all of the other coats in the closet. In the closet were mainly mink coats during the winter, easily upwards of $15,000 and more. Moncler, Burberry, Gucci, etc. Well, her coat was a Moncler coat. It's easy to remember at that moment who had what coat, but after checking in 200 other coats, I totally forgot what kind of coat this woman had, and she was not a regular client, so I didn't make a special note. Well, fast forward two hours later, they're leaving, she hands me her ticket, and I go to get her coat, and when I come back, I hand it to her. She looks at me absurdly and goes, that's not my coat. With her wine glass in her hand, I go, oh, okay, are you positive? What did your coat look like by chance? She snuffed and said, seriously, isn't it your job to know that? So I asked her to come to the coat room with me so we could locate her jacket. She wrinkled her nose and told me I was a frickin' joke for not being able to do such a simple job. I apologized and walked her to the coat closet. We searched high and low for about an hour for her coat, and at that point she was screaming at me, every name in the book. I stood there, calm as could be, because the money was worth it. I finally decided to involve the manager because I just did not know what to do. He didn't know what to do either. He said he would reimburse her for the cost of her coat and we would write a check, but she refused. She must have tried on all 200 coats in her closet and claimed all were not hers. I was petrified at this point that I had given her coat away to someone else, as many do look the same. She had told me she had a mink jacket. There were hundreds of minks in the closet that night, and I didn't remember she actually had a Montclair. Well, she told me I would be getting a bill personally from her lawyer, and I was actually scared because I knew how expensive those coats were. She berated me and degraded me in front of the manager and told him I need to be fired. Finally, she had enough and said, well, since you gave my coat to someone else, give me the coat you initially gave me because I can't go outside with no jacket. And at that point, I was like, whatever, take someone else's coat. I don't care anymore. So she takes the coat I initially gave her, puts it on and says, wow, it fits perfectly. She reaches in the pockets and says, how did this coat happen to have my wallet and keys in it too? I looked up and literally had no words. I wasted about two hours now being belittled by the woman when I was right the whole time. The lady was like, I don't know what to say. And my manager said, you owe her, me, an apology. And the lady handed me her wine glass and a $1 tip. No apology. It left like nothing happened. I sat down on the closet floor and poured my eyes out. I'd been awake since 5 a.m. for school and was the closing host that night, which meant I wouldn't be leaving until 2 a.m.-ish and getting home around 3 a.m. and waking back up at 5 for school. She wasted what little energy I had left and made me feel so worthless. My co-workers were awesome, though. The bartender made me a drink and they all gave me a hug. Wow, well, that last one was a bit of a doozy. Still, I hope you enjoyed the rest of the video, and if you made it this far, I'm sure you're going to enjoy even more the next one. What privileges do insanely rich people receive at theme parks? Story 2 was insane. I'll see you in that video, and thank you for watching this one.